President uh, Dennis Francis, Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ali, and warm greetings from the people of Palau. President Francis, congratulations on your election. As a fellow islander, you are well aware and acquainted with the common challenges that SIDS face, from economic resilience and climate change to financing and security. We all look forward to working with you over the next year to meet these challenges. Secretary General Gutierrez, we thank you again for your tireless efforts and advocacy for a more secure, prosperous, and sustainable world, which is our ultimate goal and what brings us here today. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is a universal call to action. As a small island developing state, Palau faces economic challenges related to our small population. We are vulnerable to climate change, and we struggle with the high cost of imported foods and goods, and face infrastructure challenges due to our remote location. These, share issue, these, these shared issues highlight the unique challenges faced by SIDS in our pursuit of sustainable development and a better life for our people. Mr. President, like other SIDS, Palau is working to build a diverse and resilient economy. We are looking to the digital world, which doesn't rely on land mass, but on our determination to succeed. The new perspective is born out of a harsh lesson learned when punch it started coming about seven years ago. In 2016, Palau's economy, heavily dependent on tourism, had a significant downturn. When first, in one year, we lost 13% of our tourism. And by 2019, these numbers had dropped by 47%. And in fact, when COVID-19 hit and in 2021, that number had reduced to 3,400 visitors, or we lost 98% of our tourism numbers since, 19, since 2015. Mr. President, I share these figures to underscore the susceptibility of external influences and, prof and the profound impact they have on our national economy. Already, su already suffering from the drop in tourism, Palau was hit hard by the worldwide delay of goods caused by the pandemic. Factor factories shut down and, lo and logistical challenges, challenges led to delays in the delivery of equipment and supplies. Prices soared, and Russia's invasion of Ukraine further aggravated the situation, causing gas prices to skyrocket. The economic downturn experienced by Palau underscores the interconnectedness of our global community. If tourism challenges and COVID-19 were the one-two punch, the inflated cost of goods could have very well knocked us out. Luckily, we had the help and support of partners. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia, although geographically distant, uh, had a ripple effect that led to high inflation and prices in Palau. This situation raises the importance of security and how destabilizing conflict can be to world order. There are Palauans today who survived a war that was not of their own making, only to suffer the ripple effects of another. Current events serve as a stark reminder of the urgent need for peace and stability worldwide. We unequivocally condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine and call 
for an immediate cessation of hostilities. Similarly, we urge the United Nations and all parties involved in the Taiwan Straits to exercise restraint and seek a peaceful resolution to reduce tensions, the well-being and prosperity of nations and their economies are intrinsically linked to global peace and stability. For the last two years, we have been striving to build a resilient economy amidst external pressure. A significant challenge has been out-migration. Since 1994, when we gained our independence, nearly half our population has left in seek seeking new opportunities outside and beyond our shores. The brain drain has not only reduced local capacity, but has hindered growth. We are grateful to partner nations, including the United States, Japan, Taiwan, and Australia, and others that provide assistance and training capacity to upskill our local population as well. And we are encouraged by discussions to promote economic investments and potentially create job opportunities that can help discourage out migration and promote economic growth. Climate change is the most significant challenge to our progress toward achieving sustainable development. The impacts are evident in our coastal areas, agricultural lands, marine resources, and cultural heritage, and most importantly, our livelihoods. Assisting in mitigating and adapting to these impacts is crucial for our continued progress and survival. In my youth, I'd spearfish on the reef with my father, helping to provide for our family. There was one remote island in Palau, southern waters, where we would go. It was alive with birds, turtles, and fish, and clams. Recently, I revisited this island with my children, witnessing turtles laying their eggs. The island had diminished in size by two-thirds due to sea level rise. And sadly, half the turtles' eggs that were laid that night were in the tidal zone and unlikely to survive. This heart-wrenching reality mirrors the fate of our homes and cultures if we fail to take decisive action. We urgently call on the G20 nations, responsible for 80% of global carbon emissions, to uphold their commitments to the Paris Agreement and limit warming to 1.5 degrees. This is crucial to mitigate the climate change impacts like disappearing islands and unhatched turtle eggs. As major emitters, the G20 nations have a crucial role to play in emission reduction and leading the path towards sustainable development. We urge the UN to simplify access to multilateral funds for SIDS and other vulnerable communities. Promoting faster transition, we call on the international community to work with the SIDS to increase access to climate finance. And we believe it's time that we change the metrics we use to determine how we access these funds by using a better index, a multi-vulnerability index, to determine how we help. However, we must ensure that commitments pledged here are acted upon and not forgotten. We have a saying in Palau that goes, Ngora terbesel adal. Let's not be like the foam riding on the waves of the ocean, drifting without settling. This Palauan saying refers to meetings where much is said, but afterwards no action is taken. Despite these challenges, we acknowledge progress that has been made. COP26 in Glasgow, COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh were successful in leading to green domestic policies in some of the world's largest economies. And we appreciate 
the support of nations opposing uh, and putting a moratorium on deep sea mining. Proponents argue seabed minerals aid renewable transition. But the reality is we lack the knowledge about the potential impacts on the underwater ecosystems this devastating action could have. Disturbing the ocean bed, we know, could release stored carbon dioxide, which directly contradicts with our efforts to combat climate change. We advocate for a global deep sea mining moratorium and adhering to the UN Convention on the Law of the Seas precautionary principle. On a positive note, Palau will sign the BB&J instrument tomorrow. Universal participation is crucial, especially from developed countries that can provide the implementation means and engage in areas beyond national jurisdiction activities. This moment signifies global unity in protecting the high seas biodiversity. Palau also would like to take this opportunity and second President Biden's call for the Security Council's reform. We believe such reform would introduce fresh perspectives and allow nations like Japan a permanent seat in the Council, which has say, seen little change since its establishment in 1945. We propose considering the abolishment of the veto powers, which can obstruct effective UN action. The upcoming summit of the future in 2024 and the 80th anniversary of the United Nations in 2025 present a fitting opportunities to demonstrate progress in the Security Council. We also advocate for change regarding the Republic of China's Taiwan unjustly excluded from the UN processes. Despite its remarkable leadership and innovative solutions, Taiwan has collaborated with Palau on many vital issues, such as tourism, agriculture, ocean conservation, climate, gender equality, education, and innovation. And we urge the UN to allow Taiwan's meaningful participation in crucial specialized agencies and processes like the WHO, ICAO, and the UNFCC. Taiwan's 23 million people have much to offer to the world. And the UN Charter affirms the equal rights of all peoples and nations. And we urge the UN to uphold the vision by allowing Taiwan to participate and contribute. Our world is under siege from war and climate change and threats that undermine sustainable de development and have driven uh, many into poverty. The Ukraine crisis exemplifies this, with lo lives lost, property destroyed, and essential supplies disrupted. These crises are not distant threats, but harsh realities affecting millions, including those in the Pacific Islands. We act now, we must act now to improve life across our shared ocean and world. The Palawan story of Teba, a son, teaches us about unity. Teba and his friends went to the forest to fell a large tree to be carved into a canoe. Unfortunately, the log ended up in a taro swamp. Unable to move it, Tebang went home to consult his father, who gave him a chant. He returned with all his friends and together chanting, it can move, or we like to say it can move, uh, they began pulling in unison, which allowed the log to be pulled from the swamp to the shoreline to be carved into a canoe. Just as Tebang and his friends moved the log, 
we too can move mountains if we speak and act together. Our task may be daunting, but remember, ikkamu. We can move towards a sustainable future where our grandchildren can breathe clean air, swim in pristine seas, live in peace, and prosper. So let's raise our voices together and chant ikkamu. Let's move this world toward a better tomorrow. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we can ensure th a thriving planet for generations to come. Let's seize this moment with unity and determination. Let's unite for a better tomorrow, because together, we can move. We are truly stronger together. Sulang, thank you, and God bless you all. Au nom de l'Assemblée générale, je tiens à remercier le président.